jury has reached a unanimous verdict. Is that correct? We have, Your Honor. All right. Could you hand the verdict form to the bailiff? The jury find the defendant, David Mark Temple, guilty of murder as charged in the indictment. It's signed at the foreman of the jury. Does either side wish for the yes, jury to be polled? All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask you if this is your verdict. Answer yes or no. And this is your, your first jury number, okay? All right, number one, is this your verdict? Yes. All right. Number three, Five, is this your verdict? Yes. Okay. Number eight, is this your verdict? Deliberto? Yes. Okay. Number 13, is this your verdict? Yes. Number 16, is this your verdict? Yes. Number 19, is this your verdict? Yes. Number 34, is this your verdict? Yes. Number 35, is this your verdict? Yes. Number 43, is this your verdict? James? Yes. And number 47, is this your verdict? Yes. All right, okay, the verdict stands. Gentlemen, uh, it's my understanding that you have not finished lunch. Is that? We have. Yeah. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, I, uh, the court, I do want to proceed forward in order to make the best use of your time. Uh, it does take both parties a bit to get prepared, so I'm going to excuse you back to the jury room, and uh, it will probably be about an hour. Okay? Everybody understand? All right. Thank you. Please retire the jury. All rise for the jury. Please be seated in the recess. 
Okay, if you're just joining us right now, we have some breaking news. This is a, a case that we've been following. We do have reporter Tom Abrams in the courtroom there, but as you can see it across your screen, the judge just issued that verdict. Temple coach found guilty. Again, this is the retrial of that former football coach. We've been following this for you, and that is just breaking news. And now we are in a Houston courtroom. Judge Kelly Johnson is that judge who just was speaking a second ago, if you were listening. We do, are still collecting a lot of this information. Tom Abrams is in that courtroom getting all of those details. But what we can tell you is the original trial, the coach was found guilty. Again, this is the retrial and that same verdict coming out, a guilty charge. This is now just breaking to us in the newsroom. This is of David Temple killing his then wife Belinda who was pregnant with their second child. It's the second time that Temple's case has been before a jury. Here's some details that we can give you from our reporter Tom Abrams as I said who's in that Houston courtroom. It was an eight hour deliberation yesterday that jury was sequestered at a hotel that was last night. That jury is consisting of eight men and four women and again just a you can see a lot of emotion there in the courtroom from different people who are part of that courtroom and you know the family off to the side breaking out in emotional crying and listening to this this is the retrial of that judge temple from 1994 he was originally found guilty in that one as well so this is that retrial but like we said just getting that breaking verdict as we're trying to gather more information. So to go back over a little bit of this for you, if you're just joining us and you're not exactly familiar, this was, the jury was deliberating whether the former A. Leaf Hastings football coach, David Temple, was guilty of killing his then wife, Belinda, who was pregnant with their second child. Now, like I said, it's the second time Temple's case was put before a jury. David was convicted several years after Belinda was found dead inside a closet in their home. She'd been shot with a shotgun. He was given a retrial when it was found that the prosecution had withheld, withheld some evidence. And, you know, hear, hearing that uh, verdict, they're just breaking. If you're still looking into that courtroom, we're seeing a lot of people crying, some hugging, emotional, as we just heard that breaking news that David Temple, that former football coach, was found guilty. So we are seeing that emotion from those in the courtroom as they're just hearing this news. This is the retrial and it turned out to be the same verdict despite this retrial being held because prosecution had withheld evidence that would have benefited the defense. So again, the jury consisted of eight men and four women and the original trial was in 1999. So we are still gathering some information, working to hear from our reporter, Tom Abrams. Of course, he's busy in that courtroom as he's trying to gather some more information and put together everything that we have experienced today and over the course of this retrial. In those closing arguments, Prosecutor Bill Turner said there was a missing 20 minutes in which he could have killed Belinda. He also said Temple was having an affair with the woman he would later marry. So just some of those details that we've heard and that you can also find on abc13.com if you're just joining us now and trying to catch up on this case. But of course, this was a, something we've all been talking about for quite a while. This original trial was in 1999 and one of those devastating elements of this story was that the coach's wife, Belinda, when she was killed, as we've said, was pregnant with their second child. So we've listened to this case over the past couple of days and just hearing more of those details. Now we are now find we are finding out that once again that former A League football coach David Temple found guilty. Just breaking news coming into us right now. And Bree, I'm gonna add, I'm the um one of the special projects producers. My name is Allison. We've been following this case. Something interesting that we talked about today with our legal analyst, Steve Shellis, is that mm -hmm. because this happened in 1999, mm -hmm. or that the last time this was tried, 
Now that he's been found guilty, Mr. Temple, he will actually be penalized the way that he would have had he committed the crime back in 1999, as he did. He will not have the much more severe penalties we have today. He's actually potentially going to get probation, and that's decided on by the jury itself. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, that that's different than when the families or anyone else was following this from when it first happened in 1999. And... Our legal analyst sharing that information with us today as we talk to him about what does it mean if he is found guilty or non guilty not guilty and of course now we're finding out that former coach was found guilty so if you're joining us this is breaking news we do have our reporter Tom Abrams who's been in the courtroom following this case but that breaking news coming out from the Houston courtroom with Judge Kelly Johnson that that former coach once again found guilty similar to that 1999 trial so this is the retrial um, and now he's charged with killing his wife so there were it was a, another jury trial similar to the one in 1999. This consisted of eight men and four women. And we know there is a lot of buzz about this, but we spoke with that legal ex, uh, expert. We have Allison here, who's um, also working on this. If, um, I'll move aside so we can step in here. But okay. We you can kind of share here <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> you spoke um, to uh, Stephen. You know, he had some thoughts on this that might be interesting for people who now wonder what happens next. Right, so in terms of the penalty, he could face between five years in mm -hmm. prison and life, but he's also eligible for probation, which is crazy to think. Mm -hmm. um, again, this has to do with the fact that in 1999, there was a law that said that this is how you would be penalized and this is what would happen if you were accused of murder. Mm -hmm. Today, our penalties would be much harsher. So he is going to have potentially a lighter sentence moving forward, mm -hmm. which is kind of crazy. But It is, and, there, and there's a lot of elements to this that I think people are going to be questioning now that we have this guilty verdict and we're trying to gather uh, some more details here. But, you know, in this case, the defense argued that there was no missing time. Um, they said there were other suspects at the time of the murder and other ones who could have been responsible. And then, you know, with um, just different discussions going on, they they argue that the only uh, smoking gun here was a shotgun that was belonging to a kid who Belinda Temple was afraid of. So that was just some of the discussions. And if you're you're just catching up on this case and you want more information about it, of course, on ABC13.com, we have all of this listed here from all of the different arguments that have been going on and what both sides were arguing. They're also, they also said that reasonable doubt was an element that the defense was stressing in its closing arguments. And of course, you know, now finding out that Temple has been found guilty yet again, and this is the original trial was in 1999. And as we just heard Allison talking about, we spoke to a legal expert today who said that the penalty that he will be looking at most likely moving forward will be not as harsh as what some might be expecting only because he was originally tried in 1999 and the laws there were very different so that's going to be interesting to stick around and watch and of course we'll be waiting to hear more about that once uh, tom abrams comes out of the courtroom and see kind of what's next in this situation but something breaking. we also learned from steve shallis mm -hmm. our legal analyst he said that um in terms of moving forward the defense has the choice to pick whether the the penalty comes from either the jurors mm -hmm. or the judge. And so this is kind of interesting when you mm -hmm. deal with a guy who is known, who was found guilty the first time around. Would you really want jurors who have heard that story to be given the option to penalize him, to decide what the sentencing is? Mm -hmm. um, in this case, the defense did select the jurors. They didn't select Judge Kelly Johnson to say, what's going to happen to this mm -hmm. guy? Um, so we'll see how that plays out. Which is interesting because as we've talked about, that 1999 trial was before a jury, before a jury again. So obviously mm -hmm. this jury is hearing something in these two arguments that's leading him them to believe that he was the one who killed his wife, who was pregnant right. at the time. And now they're going to be the ones deciding his fate, which, as you said, probation could be an option. Mm -hmm. Judge Kelly Johnson specifically told them, though, told these jurors, because you have the burden, I guess you would say, mm -hmm. of deciding what's going to happen to this guy if he is found guilty, you should not enter any of the information that we found out in that first trial into consideration as you listen to what happened over the past couple of weeks. 
So that's really hard to do as a juror. Yeah, I imagine that'd be extremely difficult um, for anyone because you have an opinion after sitting in a courtroom listening to all these different arguments and now they're going to be deciding that fate. So that will be something I'm sure a lot of people will right. be It was a high profile case at the time. It'd be hard to say that they found jurors that knew mm. nothing about this, but. Right, which also is interesting because hearing all these details, the um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but both times the juries were able to deliberate and come to a decision within about the same amount of time, about yep. eight hours. Yep. And about we've seen trials, hours. we've covered trials where that lasts far longer right. than just those eight hours. Think about the AJ Armstrong trial. That right. went on for days, right? Right. And that one also we're going to be going back to in their retrial. Exactly. And that one, you know, retrial, but this one had where they were just saying it was guilty. He was retried because they had found that there was some evidence not shared that could have helped the defense. And so that's why this retrial came about. But then eight hours again, similar to 1999, they're able to come to another guilty mm -hmm. decision. So that'll be interesting to sit and watch. So if you're just joining us or you're, you're, you're tuning in here, this is breaking news that we've been following this case that is being overseen by Judge Kelly Johnson. This is that former A-Leaf football coach who in 1999 was found guilty for killing his wife, who was also pregnant with their second child. He had a retrial and we've just learned that that verdict has come back as guilty. This was in front of a jury. A jury consisted of eight men and four women who listened to both sides argue um, you know the the defense saying that they really felt as if there were a lot of reasons to for, for doubt they were saying that reasonable doubt played a big role here arguing there were time gaps in between this murder could have happened and made him not not the person who did it they also said that there were other people who Belinda was afraid of that is his wife his former wife um, but as we're finding out now that those arguments obviously didn't sit strong enough Lee strong enough with the jury to where they have found him guilty. So we do have our reporter Tom Abrams there who has been in the courtroom, who has been following this. He's also been tweeting about it and he shared that breaking news just 16 minutes ago saying that David Temple was found guilty of murder in the 1990 death of his wife Belinda. He shared that 16 minutes ago and then now we've had the breaking news that yet again found guilty. So as we just heard Allison talking about the decision now let's rest in the jury's hands to figure out what the next steps will be. So we're gonna continue to follow this and update you all with whatever we find out following this case. Um, we know that we're waiting to hear that update from Tom who's been in the courtroom hearing the response from both sides. We saw a bunch of people crying, a lot of people who when that verdict came out broke down, grabbing tissue, grabbing each other, some hugging, some just leaning forward and crying. So. It'll be interesting to see uh, what Tom has been able to experience in that courtroom and what he's heard from anyone sitting in there, both sides, those of the family who stood by Temple claiming that he was innocent. We've heard from his brother in the past who said that his there's no way that he was guilty of this crime, that he loved his former wife, Belinda, and they're happy that there was a retrial, but now we're hearing that it is a guilty verdict and I'm sure Tom will have those reactions from family members who are listening to this same verdict from the 1999 trial yet again and figuring out exactly what those responses will be or those feelings from each side, the family who lost their sister, their daughter, and also what could have been their granddaughter, grandson, nephew, um, that Belinda was carrying their second child when she was killed with the former football coach. And now we'll also hear from them who are I'm assuming to the relief hearing that this is now another guilty verdict for David Temple. So we're just waiting for that update from Tom Abrams. Of course, he's putting all of that together for us as we continue to follow this breaking news of the former Ailey football coach who was now who is, has been found guilty. So we'll continue to follow that. Tom will have that update in our three o'clock show. And we'll also continue to follow these details and share with you on air and online.